Fine, thank you. Jesse, we're doing the cafeteria to have lunch. All right, uh, I would avoid the roast beef. Thank you for the warning. <laughs> what do you hear from Lauren Scotty? Well, we talked to them last night. They were planning on spending the last day of their honeymoon on the beach, and they have loved every minute of it. Ah, that's wonderful. I bet they're sorry it's coming to an end. Laura says the time has gone like light. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. At least that's the way I remember it. Yes, it oh, does. Sure. Uh, Monica. Hi. I was wondering where you were. Well, I've been on two. I've been waiting for some test results, but they haven't come in yet. Uh, one of my patients? No, no, uh, Dr. Cunningham's. You two off for lunch? Yes, we are. Well, listen, I, um, I can uh, look after Mrs. Kokorian for you. But just be careful of Mr. Kokorian. He's still a little upset because I denied him visiting privileges. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, have a nice lunch. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Jesse, I'm expecting a call from Dr. Dana Hotchkiss. Uh, if it comes through here, would you have it transferred up to 10? Yes, of course, Monica. Okay, thank you. Take it easy, Monica. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. That's all right. What was it? Dr. Summers. He's on his way up to tell Spence that he's going to be released tomorrow. Oh, that's wonderful. Hey, it may be wonderful for Spence, but the Weber house is going to be very quiet with Matt and Ryan gone. Right. Especially since we've already lost Laura. You're going to miss those boys a lot, but now we can start concentrating on having a child of our own. I have some absolutely terrific ideas for turning Laura's old room into a nursery for our first born son. Well, that's one bit of redecorating I'm not going to mind at all. But I just wish we had been able to spend a little more time and do more with Lauren Scotty's apartment. Well, we had to leave something for them to do when they get back, and I think we got quite a lot of comfort. Oh, Rick, I can't wait for them to be back. I have to admit, I really miss Lauren a lot. I know you have, Liz. Can't wait to see the pictures of their honeymoon. What would you think of our inviting them to dinner the first night back? I think that would be probably the worst possible thing that we could do. You do? Yes, we both have to guard against being interfering parents, in-laws. Well, I know that. I don't, I don't want to do that. It's the last thing in the world I want to do. I don't see that inviting them to dinner would cause that to happen. I mean, it would save Laura having to cook on her first night back, and there's, there's a lot of stuff in her room that I know she's going to want right away. Yes, that's true. So? We could combine that trip with a dinner invitation. That way, Laura wouldn't have to cook on her first night back. And we would get Laura's room cleared out so that we could start quicker turning it into a nursery. Well, that's one argument I won't even try to speak. Call them. Ask them. Thank you. I shall. And I won't make a habit of it. I want them to have as much time alone together as possible in the first few weeks. <sighs> now, would you like some more tea? No, I'm fine, thank you. I hope Heather can pull off the surprise party for Jeff tonight. Oh, I do, too. It's all a matter of timing, you know. If one person gets there late and Jeff sees them walking up to the door, there goes the surprise. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see that happen. Neither would I. I want it all to go like clockwork for Heather's sake. She's worked so hard trying to pull it off. I think she'd just be heartbroken if it weren't a surprise for Jeff. Z. Can you find this for me, John? Yes, Dr. Quartermain. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Quartermain? Yes. How's Patricia? She is, uh, just the same as I told you earlier, Mr. Kokori, and she's resting comfortably. And if her condition continues to stabilize the way it's been, there's a very good chance that she'll be able to move out of IC permanently this time. I never really understood why she was moved out of and then back into intensive care so quickly. Well, Dr. Weber felt that it was wise to take that precaution, that's all. Or was it a mistake on Dr. Weber's part to move her off this Absolutely floor in the first not, place? Absolutely not, Mr. Kokorian, please. Look, I'm going to say something to you once again. I wish you would accept it and understand what I'm saying. Your wife is very lucky to have Dr. Weber as her cardiologist. He happens to be one of the best in the country. Okay. I know you're very close to Dr. Weber. And so it's natural that you think a lot of him, but... But I've heard other people talking, and they thought it was unusual for him to turn over his surgery to an assistant. Well, I and think... And then really not even stay in the hospital until she's out from Mr. under the Kukoy, anesthetic. I think you are putting too much importance on idle hospital gossip. Well, where there's smoke, 
There's fire. That's what I found out. And a man of Dr. Weber's stature is automatically a target for that kind of gossip just because of his reputation. Well, then why can't I see my wife, even for a brief visit? Why am I being kept from her? Because your wife is in very fragile condition and Dr. Weber doesn't want anyone to upset her. I'm not going to upset her. She's my wife. I love her. I understand that. Then please, let me see her. I'm sorry. Uh, look, I can't give orders up here. Dr. Weber is the only one who can give permission for something like that. Well, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. But you are going to have to trust us to know what is best for your wife. Dr. Quartermain? Yes. Telephone. Oh, excuse me. Sure. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Quartermain. Oh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Hodgkiss. Well, I can't leave the floor right away, but I'll get to your office just as soon as I can. Okay, thank you. Attention, kind of. Yes, I have a bit. I wonder what's responsible for that. Well, it's nothing that she wants to talk about, I can tell you that. I hope everything's all right at home with Alan. She says everything is fine on that count. You asked her about it? Yes, you know, I, I told her I've seen that same kind of nervous tension. Leslie, I feel partly responsible for the trouble that developed between them that led to their separation. I know, I understand. I hope you also understand that Monica's happiness is important to me. I mean, that shouldn't bother you right now. That's just a statement of fact. I, I'd be dishonest if I was denying it. It doesn't bother me. Not at all. I understand that there is a kind of bond between you and Monica that will probably always be there. But that isn't a threat to me anymore. Glad to hear that. Uh, most wives would have never understood it at all. Ah, but then I am not most wives. No, you're more like one of a million. Where are we going? Mm -hmm. Hi, Hi. Do you know, I totally forgot your warning about the roast beef, and I had it. Oh, did you? I'm really sorry. You see? <laughs> we'll see you all later. All right, okay. take it easy. Wow. So good to see Rick and Leslie back together and close. All you have to do is look at them to tell how much in love they are with each other. That's right. It's like my love for you. Everybody in the hospital is talking about it. If you are going to pursue that subject, I forget my lunch and go back to work. Okay, okay, I'll be quiet. Rather than suffer a severe penalty like that. That in a hospital this size, you would figure we could get decent you roast beef. Even if they sent out to... Well, you were told not to have Back from lunch already? already? Yes, I'm going to be in the clinic, Bobby. And I'll be on... Jim. Okay. You two look like newlyweds on a honeymoon yourselves. Oh, we do. What a nice couple. Did you hear that? Yes, it was lovely. Bye, Mommy. Here, give it up here. Here.